Hi and welcome to this um, first recording which is going to focus on um, first order systems. Um, so last week um, I guess we did two things, we kind of set ourselves up in terms of introducing the module and the teams and all that sorts of things uh, and I guess the focus then in terms of the lab side was to get um, a set of data which would look something like what we're um, showed here. So we've got or uh, an example input signal so we're going to focus on step like input signals uh, and um, we have then captured um, a response of the system so for each of your systems this is a change in the um, height of liquid in the tank or a change in the air temperature depending on the type of system that you're dealing with okay and the sorts of things we um, talked about is that for this to be useful on the one screen in Simulink you want both of your signals displayed um, uh, you want your input signal to be um, sorry your um, uh, level or air temperature to be constant at the start a change and then it's constant again so you want to wait until it more or less um, settles down or reaches what we call a steady state um, and neither of these should be saturated i.e. they should be below the um, 10 volts okay so what we're going to focus on um, in this recording is then what are we going to do with this data and how do we um, get a model a mathematical representation from this uh, so the key bits of learning that I would like you to take from it is to be able to define the parameters of a first order system so you know what's the definition of those and then to be able to identify the parameters of a first order system from data and to be able to identify time delay from measured data All right so definitions and be able to make the calculations to, uh, to estimate the parameters um, this is important uh, for a number of reasons. I guess if you look at the learning outcome associated with the module, uh, we have to use measure data to identify a first order plus time delay transfer function for a laboratory. So this is one of the key bits of learning. Um, this notion of modeling is a generic skill which is used in lots of different contexts. So it's you know in terms of your professional career and your professional development, it's important to have an understanding of how this is done or how you would go about doing it um, and you'd have seen all sorts of examples you know you've transistor models we've simulators and game engines and things like this which all use mathematical models of physical systems in order to do simulations and training and games and things like that um, specifically each of you needs to be able to do this on the rig uh, um, and um, you know as a group you need to be able to get a good model in order to design a controller we kind of mentioned that last week uh, and obviously uh, so in terms of you know progressing through the design getting these models um, is important because um, your design is going to be less successful um, if, if you don't have a decent model uh, and in terms of your own achievement, uh, you're going to be asked to write uh, a report and you need to talk about this process as, as part of it. How did you get um, the model? How did you test it? How do you know that it's good enough and so forth? So um, the sorts of models we're going to be looking at are transfer functions. Uh, and from maybe what you'd have done with Laplace some time ago last semester or whenever you you did it you might remember and if you don't it's not critical that the Laplace transform of an exponential function so here's our exponential in the time domain e to the minus a t so a decaying exponential is going to look like this an increasing exponential is going to look like this um, if we get the Laplace so the L here is meant to denote the Laplace transform if we get the Laplace transform of that what we get is a function like 1 over s plus a where s here is not seconds this is the Laplace variable so it has the same kind of uh, meaning as t in the time domain it's you know it den denotes t denotes time s is the, the variable that we use in Laplace so, so don't get confused with seconds uh, and, and A then is associated with the time constant, so how fast um, um, this changes. So a first order system, this is a pure first order system, looks something like this when we put in a step. So what we should see is a very sh um, sharp rate of increase down here at the bottom, at the very start. 
Um, and then as the exponential function grows, we see that, that the rate of increase slows down, or if you like, the slope. So if you were to draw ch tangents to the curve at different points here at the start, the tangent is steepest, and as we progress, we get um, tangents or angles that are a lot less steep, and eventually, you know, it, it uh, levels out. Uh, and that's what we'd expect to see if we have a pure first order system. Now, most physical systems are in pure first order systems, but um, um, the, the, in, in theory, that's what it'll look like. So, um, the sorts of transfer functions we're going to be getting uh, uh, are going to look something like this. You're going to have a number on the top, for example, your 0.5. You're going to have a number here uh, in front of the s, which did, uh, is representative of the time constant. And we've got um, uh, the form then is 0 0.5 um, uh, 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 over 2s plus 1. Okay, so you know, that's, that's what you can expect to come up with where the, the challenge is to figure out what's the 0.5 and what's, the, what's your version of the 0.5 and what's your version of the 2. So the generic form or the kind of standard form for a first order transfer function we denote it as KSS. So KSS is the gain at steady state or the steady state gain. So for this example here, the gain is 0.5. Uh, and the second parameter down here that we need to figure out is tau, and tau is um, the time constant. So if we take, for example, the dashed line here, right, uh, and looking at this plot, um, the dotted line here is supposed to be my input signal, my step input signal, okay, uh, and this is a response. So if I was to figure out um, the time constant, formally the time constant is defined as the, the time it takes the response of the system to change, so to go from the start to the finish point, so the time it takes for it to change by 63%. Okay, so the length of time it takes the response to go from you know its initial value to 63% of its final value. So in order to do that, then we'd be looking at the final value. We'd be calculating 63% of that, which would give me an amplitude in here of 0 0.3 something. I'm drawing a line over until I hit the curve. I'm dropping down here, and I'm looking at this time that has elapsed. So I have two seconds here is my time constant. A lot of people get confused and take this amplitude here as your time constant. Okay, this is an amplitude. So this is the length. This is the um, the change or 63% of the change. Um, but what we're interested in, if you look at it, is time. So the time constant. So we're on the horizontal axis and we're measuring from uh, where the curve begins to change to when it reaches 63%. So we're looking at 63% of the change gives me a measure of my time constant. Um, and as you can see, so the, the, the one that we started off here represents this function. So my time constant is um, in two seconds and my gain then is the change in output signal divided by the change in input signal. So my input signal, as I said, was this dotted line up here which is an amplitude of 1. My output signal now, this probably hasn't stopped changing. It, it, it would, I didn't leave the simulation run long enough for it to go further up here. So the gain actually turns out to be 0.5 of the, the, the transfer function that I used when I generated this data was 0.5. So uh, um, I should have left that run longer. But the gain then would be the change in output. So we'd be calculating this change divided by the change in input. Uh, the solid line here gives another example where the transfer function is different. This is 1 over 0 0.1s plus 1. My gain is 1, so the a final value of the output and the final value of the input are equal to each other. And the time constant, I'm getting 63% of 1, which is 0.63 in here. I'm, dr I'm dropping down, and this then is my time constant, uh, which is the 0.1 seconds. Right. So those are the two... Um, parameters associated with a pure first order system, the gain, which is my change in output divided, my steady state gain, which is my change in output divided by my change in input, and my time constant, which is the time it takes um, the response to change by 63%. There's often another parameter which we see when we capture real data, and this is called time delay. 
And this is the interval between you know two events, between a signal being applied to the system and the sensor detecting an effect. So for the tanks, it's turning on the pump and the level in the tank beginning to change. For the heaters, it's turning on the heater uh, and the thermistor or whatever is there picking up a change in the temperature. Right. And we've got lots of examples of systems that have time delay inherent in them if we're using uh, you know, remote control, particularly over the internet or over a distance. Uh, there's a delay there you know, due to the inter internet protocols and the length of time it takes to send and receive signals. Um, I'm going to skip this example. Another typical example that we see, you know, that we encounter frequently is a shower uh, where we turn on the hot tap, for example, you put your hand under the, uh, the hose here and, you know, you're still measuring or sensing cold water. And then we turn on the hot tap more and it's still cold, you turn on the hot tap more and you end up burning your hand and then you turn on the cold tap and it's still hot and stuff. And it, it's because it takes a physical length of time to transfer the water from, you know, the valve here out to where we sense it at the end of the hose. So obviously the longer the hose, then the longer uh, the, the, the time delay is. Um, in this case. So it's uh, time delay often um, most frequently occurs because we're transporting material from one point to another. So we're transporting water from the valve to where we sense it. So if we have time delay in our system, then what do we see? Well, we see here's my uh, input signal, the green signal. Here's my change in the input signal happening at this point in time. And if I look at my output signal, what we see is when I change the input, there is no immediate response. So there's a lag or a delay between when my input signal gets applied and when the response starts to change. So that difference in time um, is the time delay. Okay. Um, so if we have a set of data like this, uh, then we can calculate the time delay. It's just in, in seconds, the difference in time between when my input um, changes and when my output begins to respond and you might need to make an estimate of when that is you know someplace around here where that curve is and time delay also has an implication in terms of how we measure my time constant because my time constant now is again from 63 percent of the change in my output is fine um, but now I'm uh, I'm well I guess in accordance with the definition of the time constant I'm taking the measurement of the time constant from when the response begins to change. So my time constant does not go all the way back here to when my input signal changes. We're looking at when the output signal starts to change, which is here, and then the time constant is from that point to when uh, um, I've calculated 63% of the change. So the way we calculate it is the exact same. Uh, and as I said, the gain is the change in my output signal. Uh, divided by the change in my input signal. And so those are the th those are the only three parameters we have with the first order system. We have my steady state gain, my time constant, and my time delay. And those are the three things that you need to be able to um, calculate um, for your systems. So on Blackboard, um, there's going to be two questions. One, what's the definition of a time constant? And the second one is you're going to get this data set and you're going to be asked, now I have numbers on this, on the vertical axis here on the, on the one on Blackboard. Um, there are two questions. So the second question, sorry, is to calculate the gain, the time constant, and the time delay um, for this set of data. Uh, you have two opportunities to enter your answers, um, and the answers must be submitted by nine before nine o'clock on Thursday morning. Thank you for... Uh, um, taking the time to uh, uh, view this uh, recording and um, good luck with the questions on Blackboard.